has come down. Is it still really raining hard? <laughs> oh, well done for being here. And uh, I hope you're not too dripping wet. I would say give somebody a big hug with a nice big wet coat. But uh, well, it's really good to gather today. And um, just welcome, welcome to those of you watching us online. And I'm um, really looking forward to, to being together. The Bible says these words in Psalm 34. Um, do, do you know what? Actually, I'm, I'm going to quote it from how I learned it as a child. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Anyone else remember learning that at Sunday school or maybe growing up as a kid? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. In, in my New Living Translation, it says, I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. And it goes on to say, I'm going to boast in the Lord. And, and I think one of the joys of gathering together, as we do every week, we don't, this isn't some religious duty. This is the joy of together saying, shall we bless God together? Um, is anyone up for that today? Let's, just, let's bless God together. And I know that sometimes it's a real effort to get here. You don't have to put your hand up to admit that. Like, you know. But sometimes it's a real effort. Um, I want to believe by faith that if this morning, for whatever reason, it's felt an effort for you, that God in his grace and his kindness will just come and just flood you with his peace right now. Should we pray that? Should we just pray the peace of God and his presence, his, his brilliance? Can I remind us that, that he is so good? We're here today in his presence, almighty God. Why don't you just right now just say, Lord Jesus, I, I just want to be in your presence right now. I want to know you. Jesus, maybe just speak his name. That's all we need to do, just speak his name. Thank you, Jesus. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just settle us today in the beauty of who you are, the greatness of who you are whatever kind of week we've had, whatever kind of morning we've had, may we right now feel ourselves sinking into your greatness, 
in that most beautiful, reassuring, upheld in, strengthful way. God, I thank you for the delight of gathering together in this place to boast of you, to speak of you, to glorify you, to praise you. And when we do so, we are miraculously changed. Thank you for our being together today. Amen. Next Sunday, it won't be raining. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask Anna, just come up and talk to us about next Sunday, because it's a big day for us next Sunday. Come, let's welcome Anna this morning. Thank you. I know, Sarah. I was thinking we're getting all the rain for our allotments and gardens today. And then next Sunday, it's going to be perfect for our community fun day. So we're really looking forward to that. Obviously, it's scheduled from 12 till 3. But we'd love all your hands on deck beforehand to get it ready. Now, I'm delighted to say, Brilliant Harbour Church, that we have 64 volunteers so far. So that's good. Now, I'm saying so far because I'd like to top it to 70. So I would like six more volunteers. So if you haven't signed up for anything at Harbour Fun Day next week, then please come see me at the end. Now, Lulu would love me to say that she'd love some more face painters. You don't need a degree in art for this. <laughs> so if you just think, oh, I could have a little bit of fun with some, some paints, or maybe I could give it a bash, I've never done it, um, then let us know, because that's one of the jobs. Also, manning some more inflatables if you, you know, want to wear a nice high-vis jacket and stand by the bouncy castle and just make sure there's six people on it, that would be lovely. So just those two jobs, really. Um, but if you'd like to be part of it, please please come and see us if your name's not on the list. But we're just really hoping for an amazing day. And the whole purpose is to just be out there with our local community. So please invite people. There's flyers at the back for you to take for your roads and friends and workplaces. And then just sign up on the form if you've taken them for your roads so we don't like do your road three times. I know Mary Jane's been beaving away with Lucy counting paths for us and they've gone out into the schools this week. So 11 schools, I know we've had them at Christchurch this week and piles of 30 for each class. So that's brilliant. So please spread the word because actually this is an amazing event for us to just have fun with our local community, to just get ourselves out there and about there and for people to just come and enjoy being with us as church and um, just celebrating life together and sharing our love for Jesus with our community. So sign up if you haven't. Pray for good weather, and we'll love to see you next week. Dave and Haley are beavering away on an amazing setup. Haley always does a fantastic job pulling out all the stops to make it look beautiful in the grounds. Um, and most of it's going to happen out there, and we have got marquees in case there are a few little splats of rain, but it's going to be good. So, um, yeah, come and chat to us at the end, but keep praying for a brilliant, um, brilliant time next week, and bring your smiley faces with you. <laughs> Oh, Sarah's saying, can I pray? So yeah, God, we just want to thank you for this amazing opportunity. And we thank you that you've commissioned us to speak life to our community. And we pray that next week will just be a really brilliant opportunity for us to be visible out and about in our community and to just speak life into the people that we chat with next week, that we would be able to spread the message of hope and joy and that our love for you will be evident to our community. Amen. Brilliant. Let's just, yeah, keep enthusiastically praying for that. Why don't we stand to our feet? Shall we do that? And we're going to worship together. I will bless the Lord at all times. Do you want to say all times? All times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. And the psalm goes on to say in the next verse, come let us together exalt his name. Come let us together praise him. It's one thing to praise him on our own. It's another thing to do it together. So together, Harbour Church, whether you're here for the zillionth time or whether you've just arrived this morning and you're brand new, we welcome you. Let's together praise the name of Jesus. Thanks, Ian. Praise is rising. I start to To you. Oh, be yearning for you. We long for you. But when we see you, we rise to face. 
face the day and take your presence on my fears I wash away wash away Us, you're worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna. Come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. In the sound of Hearts return to you, return to you. In your kingdom, broken lives are made new. You make all things new. The way we see you. To face the day, and in your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, but you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praise. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus, for when we see you, we find strength to face the day, and take your presence, all our fears, I wash away. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. And take your presence, all our fears are washed away. Washed away. Hosanna. Hosanna. God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us. Welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Come have your way among us. Welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Oh, come have your way among us. Welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, you are indeed the God who saves. The God who saves. Oh, come have your way here right now. We thank you that you are here right now. You inhabit the praises of your people. Lord, you delight in the glory of your Son. So we praise your name this morning. Lord, let everything that we do honor and glorify you. The name of God every day. Fear now, 
Who then shall I fear? Who then shall I fear? Don't know you never let go through the calm and through the storm. We could ever bring. You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. In Jesus, the name above every other name. In Jesus, the only one who could ever say. 
worthy of every breath we can ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. So worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, you're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open oh, up. You are and fill me with your heart and lead me in the heart to go surround me.
Christian, you don't have to be perfect. None of us have to be perfect. We just need to seek Him. We just need to have a revelation of His love, a new revelation that He loves us exactly where we are right now. He's not looking for perfection. He's just looking for your connection. seeking perfection he's seeking connection wow it's a verse in the book of John if you want to take your seats you can but let's remain in this this atmosphere of just the presence of God. Sometimes I know that when we take our seats, we can almost zone out and think, oh, it's the next bit of the program. <laughs> no, this is the program. This is us being together and together hearing his voice. And I really believe the Lord wants to just say some things to some of us today. Before Beck came forward with that very powerful word. He doesn't seek perfection, he seeks connection. I felt the Lord remind me of a verse we find in the book of John and, and it's the words of Jesus. That's always good, isn't it? His words are always best. Somebody should say amen to that. Jesus said these words, I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth, Jesus says. So he says, I'm not lying. This is the truth. If Jesus says, I'm telling you the truth, it's because he really wants you to listen. Those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, for they have already passed from death to life. This morning I've come today with a real sense of my heart of wanting to remind us all in this place and maybe for someone here this is for the first time that the good news of Jesus is that you can turn from death to life Jesus message is this turn from your sin and turn to God you might say to me Sarah what's what, what's what sin the Bible warns us about a lot of things that aren't good practices for our lives. I think as local churches, we've shied away from saying some of them. And 
I wonder if we need to get back to hearing the truth of Jesus and saying, Jesus, if you're warning me against some of these things, then I'm going to listen to your words. But can I tell you ultimately why Jesus says, turn from your sin and turn to me? It's because sin destroys us. Like, oh, I know that it's packaged so well because Satan's cunning, right? So he makes it look really attractive. It's funny that, isn't it? I remember as a teenager thinking, why is it that the things that God says aren't good for me, all my friends think are wonderful. (laughs) And it wasn't until I got older I started saying, God, thank you that I was saved from all of that. Does anyone else resonate with what I'm saying? You know, as as a teenager, I thought my life was very boring. (laughs) Because somehow the God of this world, Satan, he has blinded our eyes. And he causes us to think that sin is attractive and it's good. But the Jesus message is turn from that. Not because he says, I don't want you to have fun, but because he says, that's destroying you sometimes we don't know what's destroying us it's just happening around us like a poisonous air that we breathe and it's destroying us and the message of Jesus is so simple he says would you just turn from the things that aren't right and would you turn to me And when you turn to me, you will cross over from death to life. That's the miracle that happens. I can't explain that to you. That's the supernatural part. I can tell you that as a young girl, I turned from sin. I made a conscious decision to say, I'm not going to do the things that aren't right. And I'm going to turn and live for God. But I can't describe to you the miracle that's happened and is still happening in my life. But I know that when we sing wonderful words like this, I know it's true. I have moved from death to life. I am no longer condemned by my sins. The sin doesn't hold me anymore. Not because I'm perfect, but because I've connected to Almighty God. Is this anyone else's story in this room? And I know that some of you are going, Sarah, why are you giving me a simple gospel message? I just sense that some of us need to hear it again. Because we're about to break bread and and it would be very easy for me just to say, this is just a symbol of God's love. And it is. But you know what God's love is? God's love is turn from sin. And his death on the cross gives us the power to turn from sin. It's hard on our own, right? And so... I just felt today, I woke up this morning with just this real sense of I wanted to lead us together in praying. And maybe you have prayed this prayer your whole life. I want to tell you today, turn again from sin and turn to God. This is a constant prayer. It's a constant way of life. But I want to, while the music's playing beautifully, Grant, I'm really appreciating your playing this morning. Thank you. Real Holy Spirit led playing. We're just going to allow just the music to play a little bit. I'm going to be quiet just for a moment. And I'm praying right now that the Holy Spirit will highlight something that you need to turn from. And I invite you in this moment to pray your own prayer. And just say, I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry. He'll tell you what it is. Tell him you're sorry. And then do what Beck has just told us to do connect with God let's just be quiet while the music's playing and just allow a moment for that to happen
bread is coming round, but would you just hold it? I'd like us to take this together, so don't eat it just yet. Just hold, hold the bread. Just, just some baskets are coming round now. We just invite you just to take a small piece of bread. And, uh, and I'd love us just to take this together as, as a church. acknowledge the body of Jesus broken for us and he did this so that we can cross over from death to life and it's my prayer this morning that as we take this that we experience that supernatural work of God in our lives I know it's symbolic, it's just bread, it's not holy, <laughs> but I tell you what, the action of us saying yes to Jesus is holy. <laughs> something of the supernatural, something of his holiness happens when we by faith say, I'm going to do what you told me to do, Jesus. I'm going to eat this in remembrance of you. Jesus said, my body broken for you do this in remembrance of me and and so as we do this I'm believing for something just supernatural to take place among us as we together in this place say I need you Jesus Isn't it amazing that Jesus takes something like bread so ordinary so simple and he uses that symbol to say take and eat eat of me eat of me and so as you eat now would you do so saying to Jesus I need you I need you and I receive you. Let's eat together. now what I'd like us to do is to take the juice but I'm going to invite you to come forward for this okay so we're going to sing again and then we're going to as family come together and um, so again if I can just have four people helping me and, and you might even want to dot around the church so everyone doesn't have to come forward maybe somebody go and stand in that little corner over there and let's continue to worship Ian is that okay and let's come and let's receive this cup of juice that just speaks of his blood poured out for us and what I love about this cup of juice is that I believe that as we take this by faith, we remember, Jesus, your blood was poured out for me. It cleanses me. It heals me. It restores me. There's something about just drinking it and receiving his healing, receive his forgiveness today. Let's do this as family. You might even want to just come forward with someone, just share it together. Let's do that. Still. 
Oh 
prayer meeting in the week with a few of you and felt a new release in the word amen but actually the most powerful thing we can do is say amen to what is happening in heaven right now often we add our amen to one another's prayers and that's a good thing to do but I think the best amen we can do is to what is happening in heaven so shall we collectively just say amen to heaven (laughs) should we do that amen don't know what amen means, it just means I agree. <laughs> just means yes, let it be, let it be. Let's just say it again. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. I don't even want to sort of say anymore. I just want Mary Jane's our preacher this morning, which is brilliant. Um, our kids have been fantastic. Well done. You've, you've sat really well this morning for a long time. So let's just take a moment to let our kids go. Our kids team who we're so grateful for. Um, you might want to just say hello to those sitting around you and, and then Mary Jane's going to come straight up and bring God's word to us.
Brilliant, we're there. Good morning. Sorry about that. I'm very impressed, Gareth, with making sure that it's straight, central. Do we need to like just measure the sides of the little flip chart there? It's all right. It's good. Well, good morning, everyone. Are we good? Yes. Are we ready for God's word? Yes, hopefully. I'm going to pray, and then I'm just going to share. Father God, I want to thank you for this morning so far. Thank you for your presence here with us this morning. I thank you, God, for all of who you are. And I just want to commit the next bit of time to you, Lord, and just say, God, will you speak to us? Will you anoint the words that I've prepared? Holy Spirit, I pray that you will take the words and that you will reach into each one of our hearts this morning. May we listen and hear what you have to say. Amen. Amen. Brilliant. Well, very excited this morning. I'm hoping that uh, my writing skills are going to be good for us this morning as well for you. I have got a flip chart because I'm going to be writing some things on here, but I'm sure that John is going to be zooming in as well. So if my writing gets too small, don't panic. It will go up onto the screen. And um, this morning... Um, is a continuation of the last two Sundays. So over the last two Sundays, Gareth's been um, preaching and teaching us and talking all about um, the spiritual gifts. And he has in particular looked at the nine supernatural gifts that we read of. And if you want to have a recap on all of those, go back, listen online, and you'll be able to to hear more of those and Gareth explains all of those I am going to start to I'm going to write so just quickly so we're going to almost have a list here this is where I'm really hoping my writing my writing is uh, good enough but it's okay hopefully we'll make sense so the nine that we've looked at that Gareth talked about this is also now testing has been I know it's not big big oh it's okay it's coming up on the screen we've had prophecy We've had word of knowledge. We've had word of wisdom. We've had tongues. This is testing me now. Interpretation of tongues. Um, Discerning spirits. Discerning of spirits. Oh, look, I'm really now, my mind's going. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've missed miracles. Thank you, brilliant. This is what I should have done, actually. Just asked you to tell me. The last two. Healings. And what was the last one? Faith. Well done. I should have done that at the start, but it's okay. Okay, so Gareth has been looking at these nine over the last um, couple of weeks. But there's more. There are more spiritual gifts. And this morning, just to start us off, we're going to add to this list, okay? And in order to add to the list, we're going to look at a few different passages. And it's really important that we realize that there is not, there's not one set definitive list of spiritual gifts, okay? And there's a few different passages. It talks about, in each one, it has different things that it mentions. It mentions some across the two, mentions some in all, it mentions different ones. So we're just going to take a moment and we're going to add to this list of spiritual gifts. So if you have your Bibles, and it will come up on the screen as well, we're going to turn to 1 Corinthians 12. And this is the passage that Gareth's been looking at a lot. And early on in this chapter we get these nine talked about. But we're going to jump further down in the chapter and we're going to pick up this chapter at verse 27. So I'm going to read it, um, verse 27. It says here, All of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. Here are some of the parts God has appointed for the church. First are apostles, second are prophets, third are teachers, then those who do miracles, those who have the gift of healing, those who can help others, those who have the gift of leadership, those who speak in unknown languages. And then it goes on. Are we all apostles? Are we all prophets? Are we all teachers? Do we all have the power to do miracles? Do we all have the gift of healing? Do we all have the ability to speak in unknown languages? Do we all have the ability to interpret unknown languages? Of course not. 
So you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts. So in these few verses, we get some that we've already heard about, but we get some new ones. Okay, do you know what? I am going to make you work now, okay? I've been looking at it, picking it out. So we had in there about prophecy. What was something that's not already on my list? Shout it out. Apostles. Let's put that down here. Okay, another one. Teachers. Another one. Oh, oh I, can't, I can't hear all at the same time. Someone might hear. Leadership. Okay, I think there was more. Helping others. Was there anything else? Was there anyone? Have I got it? Have I got it? Yeah, look, we've already added on apostles, teachers, leadership, helping others. And you know, it's really interesting. In the NLT, it says leadership. In different versions, they have a slightly different word that they would use. So in the in some other versions, they would use administration as the word here within this passage. So I'm going to add in administration. I think that is correct. Um, and, you know, even in others, it's different. The, the, Greek, the original Greek word of this one was, I have no idea how you pronounce it, kubernesis. And it's all about steering. It even talks about steering a ship. It talks about government. It talks about administration, this idea of the calling of someone to lead. So that helps us to understand a bit leadership, administration. I think in another version, it uses the word guidance within that as well. So we're going to just add this up. Okay, so we've added to our list. We're going to look at another passage. So let's now jump back a bit to Romans. And if you've got your Bibles, we're going to look at Romans 12. And I'm going to read some verses. I'm going to read from verses 3 down to verse 8. Okay, and this should come up on the screen as well. So Romans 12, verse 3, it says this. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you're better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by faith God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with the Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all... Oh, hello. Can you hear me? Oh, have you got me? I don't know what happened there. Sorry about that. Can we hear okay? Sounds funny my end now, but I'm not sure. Okay, as long as you can hear me. Um, we are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. In his grace... God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. So here we are, another passage talking about gifts. Some we've got up here, but there were others. Okay, throw them out to me. What did we get that was not on our list so far? Sorry, Dad, do you want to share the one again? Showing kindness. Thank you. Someone else shouted one at the same time. encouragement. Any others? Hospitality. Any others? Giving. We're doing well, everyone. Well done. Gold stars. If I had them, I'd be running around with little gold stars for you all. Are there any others? I feel like there was, I'm trying, I'm looking at, serving. Putting the chairs out. <laughs> Straightening the chairs. Okay. <laughs> let, me, let me just consult my list. Of chair. I think we've got a lot of those. Yeah. Do you know in another version as well, when it talks about showing kindness, it talks about mercy. Showing mercy. This is a long list, isn't it? Isn't this amazing? 
Like, this is actually really exciting. Prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, tongues, interpretation, discerning of spirits, miracles, healings, faith, apostles, teachers, leadership, administration, helping others, guidance, showing kindness, encouragement, hospitality, giving, serving, showing mercy. And do you know what? The whole intention, like these different passages, this isn't about an exhaustive list either. Yeah? I want to turn to one more passage. I love these few verses. We're going to go to 1 Peter 4. I'm just finding it in my Bible. I've put my little labels in, but I didn't actually mark what the labels were. Okay, here we go. So 1 Peter 4, I want to read verses 10 and 11. And again, this will come up on the screen. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety, there's a lot of variety there, of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Do you know I love this because I think it almost just sums it all up. It's almost like in a nice little package there. Because what Peter does here is he says there's all these gifts and he almost just sums them up under two little things. Gifts that are about speaking and gifts. Now that version uses the word helping. In others it talks about serving. But almost two groups, speaking, serving. And I think actually if you look at that list... You could almost slot them into those two different things. Basically, whatever your gift is, do it. And all of these gifts, the variety of the gifts. Do you know, I wonder as we've been doing that, whether you've sort of, it might be that as we sort of named things and we start to write it up, it might be that certain people spring to mind and you might be sat there going, oh yeah, that person's got that gift. And you might just think of different people because there's something within them that with that gift, it, it just shines. There's, there's, there's something different about it. And as I've been preparing, there's someone that's really sprung to mind. I know lots of you will know this lovely lady. It's the lovely Ange Fudge. Um, in fact, yeah, I are, they, are they Naomi Fudge? Naomi and Solomon's mum. She has an incredible serving gift of hospitality. I can see people in the room just nodding with me. She's someone that just stands out that you go, that's her gifting. And I just wonder, like maybe even just now, who might be some people that you're thinking of that have a gift? The thing to remember of all of these, all these gifts are from the Holy Spirit. What does it say in 1 Corinthians 12? It says, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. Every single one of these, a gift from the Holy Spirit. It's a gift for the body. It's a gift to work within the body of the church. And this morning, I want to now take us to another verse. And... um, As we think about all of these gifts, I'd like us to look at 2 Timothy 1, verse 6. And I know for lots of us, this will be a familiar verse. And this is, in essence, the the focus that I want to bring in light of spiritual gifts, in light of all of these things. 2 Timothy 1, verse 6, it's up there on the screen. I'm going to read it off the screen, actually. This is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. Fan into flame the spiritual gift. This is Paul writing to Timothy. He writes to Timothy and he's going, come on, fan into flame. He's saying, stir up the gift that is within you. He's encouraging him, saying, come on, stir up that gift. Timothy, I reckon he had probably quite a few gifts, but he was young, leading a church. He had a gift of leadership. He had a gift of preaching and speaking the message of the gospel. And here Paul is saying, 
stir up that gift. Now, when I, I love this verse, and when I read this verse, fanning into flames does take me to campfires. Again, okay, if you've been here for some of my, our other Holy Spirit um, talks, you will know that I'm, I quite like a campfire, okay? We established that a few weeks ago. And this makes me think of when we go campfire, campfiring? When we go camping, we love our campfires and we love marshmallows. We talked about that last time as well, didn't we? S'mores and bananas and that. And the best kind of way, I think to toast your marshmallows is not when it's flaming because literally if you put your marshmallow in the flames it's just going to set light to it who's ever set light to their marshmallows it's happened thank you a few happened in our house so you don't do that because it just sets light to it it chars it all and it's just a bit burnt and crispy you need it when it's it's gone down and you just got the embers glowing and they're really hot and you put your marshmallow in sorry i'm getting a little bit excited can you tell and it, you just got to slowly turn it it just goes all brown, a bit crispy, but the best bit is because it's crispy on the outside, but like gooey liquid all the way through. That's the best. Anyone with me on that, or you just all think I'm loony? Okay, some of us are with me, thank you. Okay, I have a picture. If we could put the embers one of the little marshmallows up on the screen. Okay, I hope you can see. This was a picture. I was scrolling through some of that camping and just found a picture of... I know it's not the clearest, but hopefully you can just get the idea. Here are some marshmallows that we are toasting. And the embers of all, it's just the embers glowing. Now, obviously, when we're camping, we do all our marshmallows. Because we're camping and we're outside and it gets cold, we're like, right, we still need the campfire to keep going. So normally, this is, this is Dave's expertise because he has to then fan the embers back into flame and quite often he uses like a tray or one of our plastic plates and it is literally fanning. Has anyone done this when you're fanning the embers? Like this, okay. Now you do have to watch out and we always get caught out because the ash goes everywhere so heads up if you're about to fan the embers make sure everyone knows so they can just move away and Dave will be there. I say Dave because it is. I just, I'm just like come on get the fire going again I'm cold. Um, so he will fan those embers, and it will keep going and keep going until whoosh, it ignites. Can we get the second picture up? Here we go, of our fire. Here we go. That was the same camping trip. So it was the same little campfire, and the flames ignite. It's very satisfying at that point as well. It's quite something. The embers are there, fanning into flame. Do you know, I just want to encourage us this morning. I want to say to us, as Paul said to Timothy, I want to say to each one of us here, fan into flame the spiritual gift, the gift that he has given you from this incredible variety of gifts. And I want to just look at a few things. I'm looking at time, I'm going to talk really quickly. Because... You might be there going, okay, you're saying fan into flame. What do you mean? How does that look like? So, a few things we're going to look at. Oh, thanks. Thanks for the appreciation. There was a little oh over there. Okay. <laughs> Can you see? What does, it all, what does it say? Embers. Okay, we're going to go for a little acrostic, thinking about... The embers. Look, you'll all remember it, see? You'll all remember it. You'll go, do you remember she said embers? And she did a little... Okay. So we're going to go through this. And for each letter, I want to just share something to just... Oh, just stir something up within us. Just to make us think about this and go a bit more. So E, we're going to start with... And Gareth's been talking about this as we've been just over the last couple of weeks. Eagerly desire the gifts. That's the first one I'm going to write on here. I'm just going to write eagerly desire because my writing's too big now, so I won't get the gift. Eagerly desire. Eagerly desire the gifts. I'm not going to say much more. Do you know in Corinthians, that's what Paul says, doesn't he? Eagerly desire. What does that look like? Ask him. Just ask him every day. Holy Spirit, will you fill me today? Give me the gifts that you want to give me today. These gifts come from him. 
And so actually there's something about that being at the start of this word, embers. It, it's, it's him. It's all about him. And so we have to make sure that we're, we're looking at him for this. Eagerly desire, spend time in his presence, invite the Holy Spirit to fill and just see what he does. Okay, that's it literally for the first one. Next one. Okay, movement. How many of us have gifts in our house where maybe someone's given us a gift, we open it, we put it on the side and we never use it? Does anyone, I know, I know I'm, some people might be like, I can't confess to that one. I'm confessing to it, okay, it happens. Anyone else with me on this, okay? Yes, we all have those. And it sits on the side, and you're like, oh, I've never really used that or done anything. Do you know, the same can be the case with us. We've got to use our gift. We've got to practice it. We've got to do something about it, okay? I was thinking as well about, um, oh, so I talked earlier about Angie and... And Faj and her amazing gift of hospitality. And I spent a bit of time in the week. I just rang her and just chatted with her. And, you know, she talked about this. And um, I just want to share that because she said that it was in her reaching out and doing, she became more confident. And she said this. She said, it grows. It grows as you step out. And I just really love that. You know, our gifts will grow as we step out and we move into that gift as we do something about it. This is the encouragement today. If we use our gift, it will strengthen it, it will develop it, it will grow it. And can I just say here, if you're there going, but I don't know what my gift is, then just try stuff. (laughs) Move. You know, when Andrew was just talking to me, she just described her story and she she said, you know, hospitality was not anything of her childhood. It wasn't something that was part of life growing up. As a teenager, she went to youth group and age 15, 16, she went to a youth camp and was then in a kitchen with loads of pots and pans. And she said it was in that moment there that it sparked something within her. Because she put herself into a position of where she was this gift. <laughs> so can I really encourage you, just, just try things. Step out and you will start to see, she talked about it being a spark. It sparked her interest and then she was intentional and as she stepped and as she did, it grew and grew and grew and it, God did something amazing. And I just think what a beautiful story, what a beautiful example for us. Be intentional Be intentional. If I had an I, I'd write that one in, but Embers doesn't spell that way. Be intentional. So movement. Next one. Some of you might have been trying to guess what you think my letters might be, but... uh, Pardon? Bold. That's a good one, but it's not. (laughs) It's not bold. We could be here all day. You know, I could have lots of money, but I'm going to go for it. Body of Christ. This is crucial. If we want our gifts to be stirred up, then we've got to understand and grasp that the body is so part of it. This is it. It's crucial to it all. I'm going to jump us back to 1 Corinthians 12. And let's just read a bit more of 1 Corinthians 12. I'm going to read this kind of middle section. We're going to start at verse 12. And this is what Paul says, doesn't he? The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I'm not a part of the body because I'm not a hand... That does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I am not part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell something, smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, 
but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honourable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen, while the more honourable parts do not require the special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honour and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members, so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honoured, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. I'm going to stop there. We are all part of the body. Do you know that list? Look at that list. This is the variety of gifts, the gifts even, variety of gifts for the body to function properly. We need all these gifts. And I want to say this morning, don't exclude yourself. Don't compare yourself. Isn't that what Paul is saying here when he he says about, you know, if the foot was to say, well, I'm not part of the body because I'm not a hand. The foot is just excluding. The foot is comparing. And in the same way, we can do that. We can compare and go, well, look, I haven't got that gift. Therefore, I'm not part of the body. And we almost can exclude ourselves. Let's not do that. We are all part of the body. Every single one of us. You know, God's design was not to have just one of these gifts. That's what he's also talking about, isn't he? That the beauty of the body is the variety that is within it. It's not meant to be that we all have the one gift. That doesn't work. It doesn't work. I read this in the week. Variety in the members of the body contributes to the beauty of it. I just love that. It's what makes the body so beautiful. Is the variety, the diversity of gifts within it. And you know, I also love this verse where it talks about how God has put every part where he wants it. And in the King James Version, it uses the words, as it pleased him. And as I just kind of spent time just looking at that word, you know, when you look back at the original word, it's this idea of like his will, his desire. It was something that pleased him. And I just love that. I'm like, that, that tells me something else other than just, oh, it's where he wants us. It, it, it pleases him. It pleases him. It pleases God to see you using the gift he's given you. I'm going to just say that again. It pleases God to see you using the gift he's given you. We need each other. We've we've got to get a grasp of that. Again, when we're so drawn into comparison, we're drawn into pride Or thinking, I'm all right. I don't need anybody else. But that's not the case. We need each other's gifts. And when we then work together with our variety of gifts, it makes for something beautiful, doesn't it? I need your gifts. You need my gifts. You know, I was thinking, trying to think of a little example. My little one that made me chuckle was thinking about just like church lunch that we had whenever it was. I'm there going, yes, let's have church lunch, let's get it in the diary, let's organise it. However, I needed Miriam's great gift of hospitality to bring that all together because if it was down to me, we would have ended up with like 50 French baguettes and we would have had like three bags of crisps. I just, I cannot do it. I cannot figure that out. It doesn't work. We needed our gifts together in order to make that happen. We need each other in the body And when we do that, it's the body functioning at its best. Do you know, as I've just been like thinking about this and the whole image of the body, I'm just like, I wonder what the church would be like if we really grabbed hold of this. 
What would it really be like if we shook off comparison? Like seriously, let's shake off comparison. We do it, don't we? I do it. I know I do. We do. It's something we end up doing. What if we shook off competition? What if we shook off pride? What if we shook off selfish ambition? Do you know what? If we shook off just ourselves, that's the place I came to when I was there going, God, if we just shook all of this stuff off, just shook off ourselves, and instead, if we embraced the diversity of the gifts within the body, if we embraced working together, if we embraced this unity and this harmony, if we embraced and really recognized how much we need each other, wow, (laughs) the body's going to function at its best. That's God's design. God's design is not comparison and pride and selfish ambition and all of that stuff. His design is a variety and diversity of gifts within the body where we function together, we work together, and we need each other. So, when we're thinking about fanning the embers into flame, the body of Christ is central. I was just seeing if it was the middle letter there. It's kind of in the middle. It's central to it all. Okay. Moving on very quickly. Okay. I won't say as much for the, some of the others. I apologize. Right. E. Encourage. Or oh, can I get it in? Each other. Encourage each other. This is what... Paul's doing to Timothy, isn't he? He's encouraging him. Do you know, let's encourage each other in our gifts. Sometimes it's hard to see the gift within yourself. And it takes someone else to come along and go, you've got a gift of this. Do you know, just a few weeks ago, I was sat with someone after church and I did just that. And I said, you have such a gift of encouragement. And they were like, do I? I'm like, yes. Again, when I was talking to Ange, that was her story. She said, I don't really notice it. And she talked so much of, when I was talking to her about John's role in her life, her husband, that he has encouraged her. And sometimes she'll be like, I'm not, you know, things will come up and he'll be the one encouraging her going, you can do that. (laughs) You can do that. You've got a gift here. He's the voice that has spoken into her saying, you have a gift in this place. Let's do that with each other and go up to each other and encourage each other saying, I see this gift in you. And then pray for them. Let me pray for you. Encourage them going, hey, have you thought about trying this? And then help them in the movement. Help them to use that gift. Help them to practice it. Encourage each other. The next one. Remember, love. Remember, love. Paul writes, the end of 1 Corinthians 12, he's talking about earnestly desiring the gifts, and then he says this, but now let me show you a way of life that is best of all. And then we get chapter 13. And I'm going to read not the whole thing because I've got time to go away and read it, but I'm just going to read the first three verses. If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy, and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Do you know this chapter is a continuation of chapter 12? This chapter is not about another gift to go for but it's a way to operate in our gifts. I want to read this quote from a book. I've been reading a a book called by um, Harold Horton is the author, and he wrote this. Having earnestly desired the best gifts, now we must attend as earnestly to God's unfolding of the best way 
in which to employ this heavenly gift. The best way in which to employ this heavenly gift, the best way is love. Love is the motive. It's not love or gifts. It's love and gifts. Gifts and love together. Our goal is love. Our motive is love. We need to remember love as our motive. Otherwise, it's worthless. It's meaningless. That is the key. And the last one. At least you know when I'm getting towards the end, don't you? It's probably quite good. Okay, the last one. I'm not sure I'll fit all of it in, but we'll go, we'll try. We have steward your gift. Oh, I can just about do it. Well. Steward your gift well. And we've, we've read a bit about this already when we looked in Romans. Let me just find it again. In Romans, it says, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. If your gift is to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God's given you. If it's serving others, serve them well. If you're, uh, if you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it's giving, give generously. If it's leadership, take the responsibility seriously. If you've got a gift for showing kindness, do it gladly. I just love this. I just love this. It's saying, come on, do it well. Take it seriously with a responsibility. Let's do it generously. Let's do it gladly. This is like not half-heartedly begrudgingly like, oh, okay, I've got to do that. Oh, no, let's do it well. The other passage I read earlier as well talks the same thing, 1 Peter 4, just finding it again. Again, it just says the same thing in verses 10 and 11. God has given you a gift from his variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Two things there, use them well to serve one another. The gifts aren't for us, they're given to us for others, <laughs> given to us for the body, given to us to serve others. Let's use our gifts to minister the grace of God to others. It talks about if you have the gift of speaking, speak as though God himself was speaking through you. If your gift is of serving, helping others, do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. You know, in the NIV version, it uses two different words in these verses, and it uses the words faithful stewards. It calls us to be faithful stewards. Isn't that good? A steward. We've been entrusted with these gifts. So let's steward them faithfully. <laughs> let's steward them well. I love too, in these verses in 1 Peter where it says, do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. This is a great way to come towards the end. It's from God. He is the source. Let's look to him for the energy, for the strength. It reminded me when I read that of Paul's prayers that we looked at where he says, the glorious, oh, I didn't write it down, the glorious unlimited resources. God's glorious unlimited resources. I love those words. This is God. And he is the source. So with our gifts, let's go to him and he will resource us. He will give us the strength, the ability to do what he's given us to do. And then right at the end, it says, then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever for his glory. Amen. <laughs> Eagerly desire, movement, body of Christ, encourage each other, remember love and steward your gift well. 
do you know, my prayer, my heart is that this will just, just help us <laughs> as we think about this variety of spiritual gifts. And I'm going to come right back to what Paul said to Timothy. Fan into flame the spiritual gift he's given you. How do I do that? Let's eagerly desire it. Let's move into it. Let's use our gifts, practice them. Let's recognize we're part of a body. The variety and diversity of us, we need each other. Let's encourage each other. Let's remember love as our motive and our goal as we use our gifts. And let's be faithful stewards of the gifts he's given us, that we would steward our gifts well. I'm going to ask if Ian and the band could come up and, um, and play. And you guys can just start playing. And um, it's quite funny, really, because this, what I've brought this morning, is about fanning into flame. And so we've been discussing this morning what song to sing. And we... It has to be fan into flame, consuming fire. And we've been having a little chuckle because we have sung this, I think this will be the fourth week in a row that we have sung this song. That's okay. Do you know, I almost was trying to be like, oh, it's the fourth time, maybe we should do something else. But actually, why? Do you know that God, God wants us in some ways, we've got to pay attention and listen to this. If we're singing it four weeks in a row, like God's going, come on, guys, come on. Are you hearing the message this morning? Are you hearing my heart? His heart is that he's got a whole realm of gifts that he gives to us. And he wants us to fan into flame the gifts, to stir it up within us. Oh, look, sorry, I can't see you again because of the board. <laughs> Feel free to start playing. And... Um, what we're going to do just at the end here whilst they're playing I'm going to pray but then what I'm going to invite us to do is the band are going to sing this song but maybe don't jump to start singing but I want to invite you to just take some time to really press in I just really feel that really press in just to take some time to pray yourself to pray the words that the band are going to sing, to pray through what you've heard this morning, to pray your words. Like I will pray, but God wants to hear your prayers and your words, your heart. Maybe, you know, it's, it's one of these, whatever it might be, but just pray into going, God, will you stir up the embers? Will you stir up my gift? Maybe you're just there going, you just want to take some time to say, God, what are my gifts? Ask the God for gifts. Say, Holy Spirit, give me gifts. I just want us to take some time before we lurch into singing to just pray ourselves. So I'm just going to pray. And then we're just going to allow time as the band sing to just, for you just to respond and for you to pray what's in your heart. Father God, I just want to thank you this morning. I want to thank you firstly for your gift of your Holy Spirit. I want to thank you, God, that you choose to dwell and live inside each one of us. I thank you for the most precious, beautiful gift that that is. And I want to thank you that you would choose to give us spiritual gifts. You have gifts for each one of us. And I just want to thank you for that. And I want to pray for each one of us. I want to pray that as a church, we will fan into flame our gifts that we will grow in this, that we will discover the joy and the delight that it comes with all of this. Holy Spirit, I just want to invite you here right now. Holy Spirit, will you fill each one of us? Will you speak to us? Will you pour out upon us? Holy Spirit, I want to pray a fresh outpouring over us this morning. Will you fill us? Holy Spirit. Oh man. Oh man. Consuming fire, fed into flame. A passion for your name. Spirit.
spirits of God fall in this place. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Consume me fire. Vanish to flame. A passion for Lord, have your way, Lord, have your way with us. There must be more than this, O oh, breath of God. Be more than this. Spirits of God, we wait for you. With us and you, we pray. With us and you. been richly blessed this morning and um, I'd like us to thank Mary Jane can we do that and um, come on let's let's not be shy <laughs> what we're what we're thanking though is the gift that God has given her and um, I recognize there's just a teaching gift here and as, as Mary Jane's been talking to me this I'm just gonna let this thought I almost feel like this morning um, it's almost been like cracking a code it's almost been like, um, I don't even know what, you know, like on a chain or something, you know, just, just getting the numbers in order. And I feel like over us as a body, this word, let it just crack open some things. Let it just be like, like some chains get released as we step into everything Mary Jane's talked about. Can we say amen to that? Really believe that. This teaching has brought life. This teaching brings truth. May this teaching release the body of Christ because she finished by saying it's not about us. It's not about us, it's about others. So God, release your church. Release your church to be all that God has called us to be. And next Sunday, we'll see that in action. How many more do you need, Anna? 
six. I'm going to say 12. <laughs> but you know what? Will you be one of those six if you haven't put your name down yet? Next week is the church in action. It is everything MJ's talked about today. Let's be the body of Christ next week. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Come on, just lift your hands up to heaven. The Lord make his face shine towards you and be gracious to you and give you his peace. Go in the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Thank you.